got a wonderful speech, but we got a choice to make it. Uh, we are going to present you uh, an experience we had uh, on a project for two years. And through this project, we, we have to explain you five rules of our experience we had and uh, how we ended up that uh, uh, developing a speech framework was new for us. So, first of all, I would like to speak about Hello, everyone. I'm Simon uh, uh, for my part, I am uh, Anne Lorigan. I work. Uh, I've been working in Astrium for four years now, and I don't know if you know Astrium, so I will explain briefly. Astrium uh, is the first uh, European leader in satellite uh, build and design. This is the main activity of the company, but there is a small part uh, that uh, integrates and develops uh, satellite and computer on the ground. So that's where uh, I work. Uh, we have been uh, developing software like more than 20 years, I think. Uh, I wasn't born at the beginning. <laughs> and we have like 20 softwares uh, now uh, in development or in the maintenance. Uh, before this uh, Solia project, uh, we are used to develop uh, most of a Swing application. Uh, but two years ago, uh, we decided to experience RCP framework and also giant methods. So this is a project context. So during the presentation, uh, to explain the rules, we are going to take a lot of examples of the product or the project. So I will briefly explain what are the functionality, just to understand the example after. Uh, so the first uh, module is uh, only a UI module that we press uh, telemetry data, which is uh, satellite uh, data. Uh, coming uh, from the satellite and uh, the, the UI uh, just plot it uh, on, the, on the display with a lot of properties and uh, details. The second module uh, is also uh, satellite data but this kind of data is different, it's more static so we more use uh, tables and uh, for the first time we use forms in the second module. And in the last module, uh, it's uh, about a sat parameter of a satellite, but this module is uh, only uh, used by uh, some happy few in Astrium because there is only two or three people that can manage this data. I say that because each uh, module that I presented to you is uh, really targeted for different people. The first one is like uh, deployed uh, in Astrium for any uh, specialist that uh, wants to see one data in the satellite. The second one is more for specialists and uh, not a lot of people can uh, manage them. And it's not deployed in Astrium because it's difficult to understand, so it's only used on a satellite control center. And the third, third one was for app issues. So we have a lot of uh, different kind of users and different kind of uh, deployment and installation. The last thing I would, I would like to say uh, before starting is that when we start the project, I, I said before we usually uh, did uh, uh, swing applications. So when we start the project and the team say uh, we would like to experience MCP, uh, all the manager just uh, say no, and the customer also. But uh, as we did some agile project. We had the first sprints that lasted two weeks and we begged uh, our customer to let us uh, show what LCP was. And in two weeks we developed the first delivery because in a giant method you have to deliver uh, um, a uh, uh, lot. Uh, so at the first two weeks we deliver an application which was the first module with only the tree view and one functionality which was creating one item in this review. And I have to say that the customer was really pleased with their RCP look and because of that he accepts that we went on developing RCP and 
just keep up on the swing uh, solution. So, uh, about this child method, uh, I have to say that we uh, used the Scrum uh, method. I will not explain all of that. But uh, in the main principle is that you have what they call a sandbox where customers, the development team or users can uh, suggest uh, new functionalities. This uh, uh, makes uh, what we call a backlog, which is ordered by priorities. And each month, we take the highest priorities uh, to be developed. We develop it and deliver it each month. So now it's like for two years well, that we are delivering uh, product every month. Uh, about the team, so including in the team there is a customer who know nothing about RCP. There was me, <laughs> knowing also uh, nothing about RCP. One guy um, uh, had made one month on a SWT uh, refactoring but didn't know about OCI or things like that. And we call uh, Igor to spend one week a month to help us to start the project uh, as we didn't know anything about RCP. So now we can start with the rules. Okay, so um, for me, I, I'm working um, uh, as a RCP developer for a long time, six, seven years, I think. And uh, when I came uh, into the team, we're going to uh, work on Eclipse RCP. The first thing is uh, how to explain and how to learn the Eclipse RCP framework. Um, first of all, most of newbies are coming from a Java background. Um, often they have made some uh, uh, UI application with Swing, applets, maybe Java FX now. And uh, there is a common mistake made by a lot of small manager or project manager. Uh, let's say just uh, replace the swing part by the SWT or G face. And uh, now uh, we can do uh, 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 So this is, uh, I think, a uh, uh, big mistake. Um, uh, first of all, uh, every developer will have uh, just a uh, small experience with uh, UI development, uh, going to learn really quickly this part. Um, in uh, the Eclipse uh, website, there is a lot of snippet on Mobility, GFS, and so data binding, and others. And uh, we uh, can learn this really quickly. In fact, uh, people are just uh, playing with tutorials, doing some uh, really small plugin, with uh, adding just a menu, an uh, entry, or review, and uh, does not think about the whole application. Uh, for example, uh, when you're starting to uh, learn a new technology, a new big framework, like uh, a Spring, a Spring framework, or Java 2 uh, the most important thing is to learn about the main principle of this framework. Uh, when you're doing Spring, you need to learn about IOC, dependency injection, and so on. When you're uh, using the uh, Java 2 platform, you need to understand what happened on the uh, server application, application server, and uh, how it's working with services, uh, trans trans transaction, and so on. This is the same thing with Eclipse RCP. Uh, in fact, Eclipse RCP is based on Equinox, and Equinox is an OEGI container. So I think the most important thing is to learn OEGI, understood uh, what are the uh, ideas behind OGI. And then you can learn uh, SWT, G phase and so it will be really easy. Um, if you doesn't learn this, you're going to have a lot of trouble, like just no dead phone, uh, circular dependency and so on. So the easiest solution is to put all our classes into one big plugin and two years after you have a uh, uh, we mess in your application and you need to refactor it and you, you cannot go further with a lot of time you just stop the application and build a new one. So, learn OSGI. 
so learning AGI meaning think about modularity. Uh, the good news is that uh, modularity taking more and more place uh, today. Uh, we can see it with uh, cloud uh, platform and uh, maybe in a few years we are going to have uh, a real uh, GDK modular. We will think so, we hope so, I think, if we are going to agree to continue this development. And uh, the good news is uh, that many uh, people who doesn't know that OGI are in the right place here, that it is from uh, tomorrow morning, there is a speech of um, OGI, don't let me be misunderstood. So I encourage you to go to this, to this, to this speech, to this talk, and learn more about uh, this, uh, this part. So, uh, imagine that you follow the ego rule, which is learn OSGI. And now you are going to start a project, but learning OSGI and doing tutorials or exercises uh, does not make you an expert. That's our case. Uh, ego explains OSGI, but we are still not a lot at ease. Uh, so how can we start a project with a team of RCP newbies? To explain that, uh, I would like to focus on the Agile um, 12 Rules uh, Manifesto and in particular uh, this one, which is the best architectures, requirements and design emerge from self-organizing teams, which is uh, kind of uh, what say the, um, the last speech. Uh, anyway, uh, I have a story to to tell about that. When we start a project, uh, Igor wanted to help us and uh, at the first we designed like three plugins, one for feature and two for I don't remember what. And Igor went and said, no, you have really to use the powerness of uh, OSGI framework and plugin dependencies. You can separate uh, core and UI, you can separate views each views in a plugin or each functionality in a plugin, like you said before. But all the team was like, no, please, this is too complicated and we will refuse to divide all the plugins to make the most beautiful RCP project. And we uh, keep our three uh, big plugins. And then the development went on and uh, uh, functionalities were added and the code grows. And six months after, these three plugins, uh, still at uh, three, were you know, really big and all mixed up. So uh, at the end, we called back Igor and said, now we are ready to divide uh, the three plugins in ten. And then one after, it was like twenty, and now we are thirty. Uh, what I mean is that our RCP our framework is really rich and sometimes a little bit complex. So when you are newbies, just don't be afraid to do some mistakes. Just don't be afraid to do it small and not perfect as a first step. And just wait to be more at ease to use all the power of OSGI and RCP application. So this is about how to manage a newbies team. It's what I call team continuous improvement. Uh, which is refactor with experience. So refactor, but wait to, to have the experience to refactor it. Uh, do some code review, what we do on the project. And it's better if the code review with two people with not the same you know, skills, exactly the same skills. Uh, it was really a good experience because in this project, a lot of people you know, went and uh, uh, was in the project and out and came back and work of that. And in fact, it was really good because each time we have someone who know nothing about RCP application and in learn, and it was really satisfied with uh, learning and improving its skills. And there is another one which was like intermediate and with Igor coming one in commons was learning also. So I really uh, advise to mix people's skills. And the last one, Erare uh, Roman Est, which is just to say uh, we can make a mistake, we can start a project uh, uh, being a new being RCP and just refactor it after. 
Okay, now um, that, uh, we have a good team um, in progress, working together, this is important. Uh, one interesting thing uh, to say about Eclipse RCP is uh, that it uh, became with a lot of benefit. Uh, just I uh, want you uh, some uh, common case, common use case we have in Eclipse RCP and explain uh, our decision, uh, our, um, what we use in terms of the platform. First of all, we have a uh, uh, Java application and running on a Java runtime. Um, the co container of uh, our application is the GI, and we have on top of that the Eclipse RCP framework, and we build Solia on this framework. So, first of all, uh, last week uh, uh, there is a new user story coming from the, the users. Uh, we want to uh, customize the color of our curve in the chart. So, um, if you uh, are just a classic Java developer knowing nothing about uh, Eclipse, you just say, okay, let's do a Java property file. This is a common use case of Java property file. But we are in uh, an OSGI container, and there is uh, already some performance services in OSGI. Built on top of these preferences, there is a Eclipse uh, extension uh, providing uh, uh, an easy way to doing reviews to uh, edit these preferences. And then uh, we implemented uh, really quickly uh, a view with uh, um, some uh, selection of color for the, the default colors in the chart. This is an <coughs> example of reusing existing things uh, in, the, in the ecosystem of Eclipse. Another story is about uh, logging. Uh, so every application needs logs. And uh, we are uh, uh, with Solia in, in an industrial context. And we need to use, uh, this is a requirement, we need to use a uh, homemade logging framework. Um, from my point of view, it's not really a good idea. There is a lot of good logging frameworks in Java, SF4G, uh, or the GDK logo. And um, I'm not really happy with uh, this uh, construct. But the good news is that uh, there is uh, in uh, OSGI. Um, some services for doing logging, and we uh, can use the OGI uh, services by implementing a log listener. So we implementing a log listener uh, and outputting the log with the homemade framework. Next, we are implementing the log listener for developer like me uh, using the SLF4G framework. And then uh, a good idea is is uh, to reuse the uh, console view of Eclipse to output the log in the console view. Uh, if the users want to know about the crash, maybe. So we are just uh, creating this uh, console views in a CDI using the console, Eclipse console views. So this is a good feature with just reusing existing things. So really uh, easy to implement. Uh, we have made a lot of reuse of uh, Eclipse uh, Jet platform, really good for doing asynchronous uh, treatment, execution. For example, uh, we are extracting data, could take uh, about one minute, so this is a good solution. Even the refreshing of the UI, uh, uh, we are reuse uh, the Jet platform to, to do this asynchronously. And uh, we also use the uh, M system of Eclipse, providing new feature like full text search and so. And we have made some uh, tutorial based on movies um, for the users. We are really happy with that. So the rules here is um, think about what exists, reuse it, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, so you have a lot of things in the Eclipse as framework. There is a whole ecosystem. A lot of things, there's uh, good OGI services, and 
Another thing that's important here is uh, when you're doing things like Eclipse Wave, it's really easy, easier. And the last thing is that uh, you does not uh, make an application just one shot. You need to think about you, your application providing new services for maybe another application or for the evolution of our platform. So the next point is about uh, bugs. So nobody wants bugs in uh, its application. This is easy to say. Uh, but how to do it with an RCP application, which is often a UI application? So the first thing is that bugs means test. Uh, Astrium defines process to avoid bugs, uh, traditionally based on waterfall process. Uh, so you know, traditionally writes a validation test plan in a Word document and uh, validates application manually uh, before the delivery. In our case, uh, with the uh, agile uh, methods that we, we used, uh, we deliver each month, so we couldn't uh, use the uh, document uh, and manual validation. So we have to fully uh, automate the uh, test validation strategy. So the problem is the, about UI uh, validation, which is not an uh, easy uh, issue. Uh, so this is not, it's our experience is not the best way, I think, but uh, we will explain. Uh, in the first release, uh, which was the telemetry data uh, I show you, we only have some UI functionalities because we have some servers to, that uh, extract the data. So the only thing that we implement was user clicking something and us, I mean the application requesting the data and giving it back to the user. So it was really hard to, to do some unit tests, so we say, okay, we're going to do the full UI test uh, strategy. And after the first release, one year after, uh, I have to say that it was really uh, long to test, first of all, because it was like two hours long, the validation. Uh, it was also really hard to maintain, and we had uh, a lot of difficulties to stabilize the validation. It was still better than manual validation, but so in the second part, we tried to develop unit tests, but uh, in our case, it was really hard to develop unit case because uh, our application is only there to uh, interface users uh, and servers. There is no intelligence here. I don't know how to say in the application. There is no uh, single process with algorithm or thing like that. So we tried it a little bit, but it was not really uh, good. And uh, we had a chance to share our experience with people, and they advised us to use what they call the functional test. Uh, the functional test can be a unit test, but it's not a unit uh, spirit. It's uh, to test your application just before the graphics uh, display. So that's the really highest uh, part in uh, your software. It can also include uh, interfaces with server or databases and all that. So this was really more uh, um, matching our needs. But to be honest, I think uh, for most of software, I, I would advise this ratio of uh, software, which is mostly functional tests, uh, because they can be uh, run fast, faster than UI, and unit test obviously, and to make it UI just, uh, you know, just before the delivery, just to make sure. They are also called the acceptance tests. So, this, there is no uh, final solution, but I think this version would be the best to test your software. So, to summarize uh, what means efficient test for us is, first of all, full automation, automation uh, test. Uh, it's also about mix different kind of tests. For, for us, we have three kind, but you can have your own level of test. Uh, also, would advise if you do a full automatic test, you really have to start to test your application from start. Because if you wait uh, first development and one or two months later, 
it's always too much uh, effort to reach development uh, efforts. And the last thing, last thing that we used is that when we have bugs coming uh, to us, we first develop the test and then make the development to make the test pass. Okay, um, so the last words. Uh, two years ago, when I in uh, during the interview at Austria, they asked me if it's uh, tough questions. Uh, shall we start with the three, dot, uh, three platform or four platform of Eclipse? And uh, I remember it's a really uh, uh, difficult decision for me because uh, I'm just coming from an uh, application made with the Eclipse form and I you know, like development with this platform, it's easier. Like an implementation injection, for example. And uh, when they ask me those questions, I, ask, I, am, um, um, I say that a good solution for this platform, I think, is the free. Uh, because of the maturity, and, uh, I say that's not a trouble because uh, you can uh, maybe make some migration later, or there is a, a, a bridge between the free and the four platform. So, I say, I think in this case, the good solution is doing the free. In fact, uh, when you're doing uh, Eclipse RCP development, there is a lot of tough questions, tough decisions. Um, for example, uh, we are um, questioning about uh, next feature, about the report. Uh, one solution is uh, use, using the BERT framework. And another solution is maybe uh, doing uh, just a custom solution, but it's really, really hard to decide uh, to, to have a good answer of these questions. Because um, with the Archive way, we don't know all the features needed by the, the users now, and we have uh, to spend a lot of time to, to find the solution. Um, another example, um, first we uh, Mostly uh, UI have uh, developed with uh, just uh, GFACE and SWT. And uh, after a few uh, tests with the uh, forms framework, uh, the, and the good uh, satisfaction of the, of the users, we decide to reuse, to replace this um, first editor with GFACE with uh, Eclipse form. And now uh, most of our editor just using Eclipse form. So, here we have made the first solution and uh, we, we change our mind during the process. Another example uh, is uh, using uh, there is a lot of reviewer in this application. So uh, first we start with a uh, classic G3 reviewer, but we also have uh, interrogation about using the Commons Navigator framework. And uh, now uh, we just improve our solution, being more generic, and we decide not to use, for now, the CNS framework, but maybe uh, uh, in, uh, in two years, uh, there is a lot of CNS framework in our application, we don't know. Uh, there is a lot of questions like that. Uh, EMF is a really powerful framework. Uh, maybe uh, we are going to use it later, but now we decide to use just a uh, really uh, simple Pojo. Uh, and so there is a lot of tough questions like that. The important thing is that we uh, don't rely on your personal preferences. Um, this is not <laughs> this is easy to say, but hard to do. And uh, when you make a decision, um, you need to think about the context. Uh, for example, the developer skill uh, does not allow to start with a difficult solution at the beginning of the, problem, of the project, like EMF or Eclipse 4, I think. Uh, there is another uh, classical criteria, is the time for doing uh, something. If you have uh, only one day or two days, for doing an editor. Uh, uh, graph editor, you shall use uh, maybe a GMF or graffiti. 
if you have a lot of time, a lot of customization, maybe just a GES solution is a good place. So the important thing here is to say that you sometimes you're doing the wrong the wrong choice. And uh, you need to reevaluate each choice, okay? And uh, learn from your mistake. So um, all these choices are difficult. So you need to improve your solution, sometimes switch from solution, sometimes you discover another way to do something and reuse it. So think about refactoring the code, refactoring your design. Um, this is really important for the, the life cycle of the uh, product. But, uh, another important thing is you can do this because you've done a lot of tests to avoid regression. If you have no test, you're completely dead. <laughs> so uh, to conclude, this are our five golden rules. But we can see uh, that maybe you have a lot of uh, rules. Um, I like uh, the read Eclipse code. You can learn a lot. It's really easy. You can uh, use the Eclipse uh, FWT plugin spy to inspect uh, what are the command view and just uh, click the link to read the code. Clean simple, uh, good uh, tooling, good use of integration. And, um, Things about uh, the build process. Uh, we need to have a uh, quick feedback when you're doing a feature. If you have to wait uh, two days uh, for having the, the, the product built, it's too too long. Uh, sharing experience. Uh, here we are speak about the project, but uh, when you're drinking a glass of uh, of one, maybe you had to, to uh, discuss, to uh, talk with other people, and say, uh, we have made this choice for this project, this is a good or a bad choice, it doesn't matter. You learn a lot of your, uh, your, of your mistake too. And uh, keep your code clean, the tips are uh, really wonderful, and that's the point for take a good decision, a lot of decision on this, and really uh, doing things really carefully. Just to, to conclude it, um, now it's two years that we start the RCP development and now I really uh, uh, welcome people uh, knowing nothing in, with RCP, like two weeks ago there is a new guy who knows nothing about RCP but I say, okay, you can come, we know how to manage that. that. I have to say that Solia now is uh, mature and deployed and even for new opportunities we had in the last few months, uh, Solia was uh, uh, designed and choice to be the framework for new tools in Asrium. So it's a good uh, point for us and for this RCP experience. Any questions? At the beginning we were three, sometimes we were like up to four, maybe five uh, with a trainee, but never more. And in the smallest time we were up to. Yes. How to perform the functional test? Well, do you use a specific tool or? Uh, uh, our functional tests are developed with GUnit, uh, but they are not scoped to one class or one package. So they are really high level in terms of testing. They are testing a full service uh, at the graphics level. And the way that we run it, uh, it's not the smartest way, but we integrate them in our UI tool tests because this generates all the documentation. So just easier this way, but it's definitely not a good choice, I think. But in our case, it's good. You said that your unit testing was uh, taking the most part of uh, your testing. 
uh, are you using a, a specific uh, framework for image testing? Uh, yes, uh, we choose uh, Squish. Uh, which is uh, not as famous as SWTBot. Uh, the reason we chose uh, Squish is that uh, it's a framework that can test uh, Java application, also RCP application, also Qt. And uh, as I explained at the uh, beginning of the presentation, our team uh, maintained tw uh, 20 uh, softwares, and some of them are really old, you know, and some of them are Qt and Java Swing. So we, we have to, to choose uh, tools that can test uh, any of them, uh, any of this technology. This is not the more, uh, most stable uh, tool. Uh, it was really hard at the beginning, but now we can have the squish skill in the team, so it's okay. Thank you. Thank you.